All right, guys. Uh, obviously, uh, good good win against a quality opponent, and uh, give Minnesota credit. I think they they make the game uh, challenging with some of their mixing uh, defenses and and uh, their ability to make shots. So give give them credit. I thought our guys, um, you know, really uh, in the second half were able to make some shots, and I think that opened the defense up a little bit. We played with a little more purpose on the offensive end there um, and a little bit cleaner in the second half. Some of it was we had, we had to adjust to how, how they were doing some things. But uh, good good win and uh, moving on to a practice on Thursday. Chris, about about 10 minutes in, Zed missed a shot. Very next time out, you actually pulled him totally aside, um, talked to him by himself for a little bit. And then the second half, it looked like he played with a little more force and was a little more effective. What was that conversation between you guys, and what did you see him like flip the switch in the second half? Yeah, we've just been on about slowing down and playing with more balance in the post. That, that's the biggest thing. He just rushes it too much. He's got to, he's got to settle the ball. He's got to read the defense. He's got to play on balance. And do you think in the first half that having Curry back maybe uh, changed the dynamic of the, the defense, the zone from the first time you guys played? Well, Curry's a really good player. Having him back helped him helps him on both ends because he's a really good player and he's a big body and he's been in this league for a while, so he knows how to play. But just in general for Zed and his, his growth, he's got to slow down when he's in traffic. He can score over bigger guys. He's done it his whole career, but he can't do it when he's rushing things. And that, that was my conversation with him. And sometimes you got to pull a guy aside because they hear it, but when you really want him to hear it, that's, that's I just wanted him to slow down because he's really effective when he slows down. Obviously, you want uh, defense to turn into offense, and it seemed like they kind of, uh, your defense kind of showed up there in that first half. Um, but, I mean, with that stretch of the scoreless uh, drought and the turnovers and things like that, I mean, obviously that was adjusting to Minnesota zone. But, I mean, what, what allowed you guys to kind of use a consistent defensive performance and kind of turn that into offense there in the second half? I think our defense helped. We were able to create some turnovers playing Jamari for a longer stretch. His activity was really good. So was Zed. Zed had two steals. Um, and then I honestly make it some open shots. I think that uh, it's, we, we were able to, to finally kind of make some open shots. And, uh, Ryan Peden had a good suggestion at halftime about attacking the zone in a specific way. I thought that was uh, helpful. And how impactful was Jam that first three from Jamari Wheeler to kind of ignite your offense there in that first half? Yeah, or uh, that, was, that was critical. It was a late clock. Uh, we were trying to get the ball inside. Ended up, uh, you know, he's, he's a really capable uh, shooter with time and space. We know that. He's very capable with time and space. Um, might take him a minute, but he's, he's very capable. We want him to shoot those and be ready to shoot. Chris, uh, what's it been like for you this year, coaching a guy like Jamari who is a little bit of a gambler, I think, on, on the defensive end. And, but obviously, his ball pressure and activity are very important to you guys, but you want to, to lose that. Game. You also don't want to sit with a bench with two fouls, two minutes of the game. So, what's that matter? I thought he had really good pop uh, today, Bill, in terms of just his bite defensively. He's just got to be able to manage that uh, aggressiveness with, with just a little bit smarter, smarter play. His second, second foul wasn't, wasn't smart. He almost got a third one. Um, so I think he's just got to balance that. He, he's got to take some chances because that's who he is. And I don't want to prevent him from, from doing that. I think we've, we've tried to stress being a little bit more solid in areas uh, off the ball and being a little more aware and you know not creating offense with this pressure. Um, but I thought he was really good tonight on a really good player. He, uh, last game and, and this game, maybe not every possession, but he's had a, a few where he, he is off the ball, maybe, I guess, a little more aware of things, direct in traffic, yeah. making sure the switches are right. Yes. Like, I'd imagine you want more of that from him, right, to be yes. kind of the guy who's kind of leading, leading things on that end of the door. Yeah, he's a good talker. He's a really good talker. And, um, you know, there's some specific parts of our defense that we've really been stressing the last two weeks. Um, um, we've showed him clips from uh, our, our team third year that was top 20 in the country in defense and, and our first team that was top 20 as well. And, and I think the connection and just some, some key points, and I think we need Jamari to continue to lead the way there with that. Um, and uh, we've, shown some, we've, we've seen some improvement, but 
obviously we're going to get tested against some really good offenses here coming up. Kristen, do you know how your team would respond after halftime? Do you have an idea that they would come out and play and flip the script the way that they did? I think, yeah, people, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really look at it like that. I, I know people think it was a tale of two halves. I, I don't really look at it like that. Listen, this team almost, you know, they went down to the last minute at Wisconsin. You know, they played Iowa. They were up four and a half. I, I just, you know, people think in this league you should just blow people out. It's just, you know, in the first half, be up 20. Like, come on now. Like, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying in general, people <laughs> think that. Like, have you ever played? Like, that doesn't happen in league play. Uh, so, I just knew that there, it was going to be a little bit of a slow drip, and if we could win some possessions, maybe we could, we could stretch it. But, you know, I didn't really look at it at the tail of two halves. Outside of our shot making, Adam was much better, and we, we attacked the zone with a little more aggressiveness. How much of that, if at all, was EJ? It seemed like they really made it tough for him yeah. to, to get going, and I mean, he scored a lot of his points. <coughs> a lot of times this season when you needed to get going, it's been EJ. Yeah, and they really crowded him. It was not single covers like we saw the other night. Um, they really crowded him, and, he, in, in, and we got to cut better off him and play off him. And if they're gonna not guard Jamar, Jamar's got to be ready to shoot it. He had to he had to probably pass it a little bit more tonight, uh, and he did. He was a willing passer. He always is, but he was a little bit sloppy with the ball at times. Chris, when you say it takes time for Jamari to get some of those shots off. What what do you mean by that? I mean, is it just that he hesitates to do it? Is it? What well, it just his, his release it, like didn't take Dwayne much time. <laughs> Dwayne never didn't even need to think about it twice. Um, but Dwayne had a really quick release. Jamar is just release. His mechanics are just a little. I'm not saying they're slow. It's just he's a little bit smaller, so it takes a little bit more time. But when he has time and space, he's very accurate. I mean, I've seen him shoot it for you know for the whole year. He's very accurate. So when teams do give him that shot, I mean, green light, he takes it? Yes, absolute green light. Absolute green light. Needs to take it, want him to take it. Doesn't need to hesitate ever at all. He's got an open three with time and space. So I want to pursue your comment about tail of two halves and pushing, you're pushing back against that. You're not happy with the first half in which you have no free throw attempts, eight turnovers, and two assists. I wasn't happy with our turnovers. I was really happy with our defense. Yeah, to, 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 to valid question. I was not happy. I thought we were really sloppy. We didn't attack the zone great. But I was really happy with our defense. I, 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 I thought we played at times really, really well uh, in the first half. We just didn't make some open shots. Um, but I, I, I was not pleased with our, our sloppy offensive play in terms of turnovers. So you talk a lot about your offensive for you, the lack of offensive efficiency in the first half was just that it didn't go in. And you well, it was it part. Too no, it was part of it, and we were careless with the ball. Okay. Yeah, we we were definitely careless with the ball. We addressed that. Careless with the ball and uh, no no offensive rebounds is, is yeah. kind of the things we hammered. But um, and I just thought we were too stagnant against the zone. So I'm not saying we played a great half. I'm just saying. Sometimes it takes you a little bit of a feel. They played differently the second time in terms of how they played their man-to-man -man than the first time. So you go into the game thinking they're going to play one way. They play a different way. you got to make some adjustments at halftime. And uh, that, was, that was part of it. Chris, kind of piggybacking off that, in the second half you guys had nine assists and two turnovers. Yeah. Did that kind of just come with getting more comfortable with what you were seeing from their defense? Or? I think that was a big part of it. And uh, like I said, Ryan Peeton had a good suggestion on a little bit more movement against the zone. But uh, I, think it, I think it was a comfort level. And then, you know, when you see a few shots go down, um, and you get that you know, five, seven point, you know, it can give you a little bit of freedom. So I think that was a combination of things. And uh, with EJ, you know, we kind of had kind of a slow start, but he still finished with 16 points. He had a big pair of threes towards the end of the game. Yeah. You know, is, that, is he just somebody that you can really just kind of snap a finger? You can trust him to make some big shots, make some big plays? I don't know if it's quite that easy, but um, uh, I've always said he's, he's God has gifted him with the ability to score the ball. He can roll out of bed and score the ball. And, uh, that's a great gift. Maybe this is too simple to pick up a question, but uh, it's obvious why it's important Justin Orange needs to shoot the ball. Yeah. A blind man can see that. 
with people like Jamari, where everybody knows it's not his strength, it's probably the weakest part of his game, and the defense is clearly daring him to do it. With those types of guys, why is it so important that they still have no hesitation to shoot those shots? Well, our, our offense needs that. <clears throat> our offense needs multiple threats out there. And uh, Jamari's going to get open looks because of against certain teams because of how they play our post players. Uh, and so will some other guys. But uh, I thought Malachi's, you know, a couple threes there early opened, really opened things up. I love the transition three he had. I thought it was a great play by Jamari. But I just think for our offense to continue to be successful, um, you know, it cannot be just you know, the EJ Liddell show every night. We're just, you're not beating good teams. I know Jamari's a veteran, but he's relatively new to your team. Would you have kept him in a game, in a Big Ten game early in the season with two fouls that quickly, or put him back in, I guess? Yeah, I don't believe in benching guys with two fouls. I have to have. I just don't believe in that. I never have. Um, it's burnt me a few times. But I, I do not believe in, in, in benching guys with, with two fouls in the first half. Um, so it's just philosophy. So just a trust that you trust the guy to play through it. Yeah, now if they burn me a few times, I probably will keep them on the bench. But uh, get five fouls, I think, before you get disqualified. So I prefer to keep our best players on the floor as much as we can. There are two more up there. Now. Are you learning a little bit about your defense in the last couple of games? I mean, you, you're starting to maybe get string some stops together. I'm sure it's not where you want it to be, and I know you're not a finished product, but are you starting to see something change in the mentality or in how your guys are approaching that end of the court? I, I think so, Adam, but I think it's, you know, it's such a such a process for us as a group. It's a climb that we have to make every day. You know, it's a commitment and a climb we have to make every day. But uh, I think we're getting a little bit better understanding. And that's really, it's got to be player-led. You know, it's got to be player-led. So we've had some good stretches here one of the best offensive teams in the country on Saturday. Does that go with you talking about how this is starting to become a little bit of a player-led team? Do, do those, yeah. those for sure. Them? I think for sure this time of year, like we have identified that over and over, that that will limit that will that will provide limitations for us. Um, you mean the defense? Yeah. Yeah. To Stephen's point about the reason why you like Justin out there in the shooting, we talked about Justin's shedding his slump a couple games ago. He does not appear in the last three that he's built on that. And it looks like Sed and Gene are taking minutes that used to be his. I know you're at this point of the season, are you not, where guys who are coming on and guys who are regressing, I mean, does that have to result in the minutes equation that we've seen, or is Justin in a position where he's got to start producing more in the future because you can't continue to count on what you've seen in the past? You know, I think Justin, Justin will get continued consistent minutes. He's in our rotation. Uh, he's not starting, but he's in our rotation. Uh, I don't see that changing where he's not going to be in our rotation because he adds too much value to our team in other ways than just shooting. Um, so I, 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 you know, I think that uh, he'll continue to stay in the rotation as long as you know, he continues to approach it the right way. I, I just think he will in our 8-9 eight eight, rotation. Or would you agree, Sen and Gene are coming on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the, yeah, both those guys, the minutes have, have uh, some of Justin's minutes have been given to those two guys for sure. Uh, but, you know, it's a pretty fluid thing as well. But uh, both of those guys have, uh, have uh, played really well here.